Let me start by saying that Jayana Brown, the 17-year-old who is driving the Ford Fusion that struck Officer Anderson's police car, has now been booked at juvenile court on charges of vehicular homicide by recklessness, felony evading arrest, aggravated assault by recklessness. The aggravated assault charge stems from the injuries to her passenger, driving on a suspended license and juvenile curfew violation. A detention hearing for Ms. Brown is set for Friday tomorrow at 2.30 at Davidson County Juvenile Court. It's my understanding that that would be open to the public but not uh, open to cameras. Many of you have asked for uh, folks at the police department to talk about Officer Anderson, how they knew him, uh, his career with this police department. And that's uh, the purpose of asking you here this afternoon. Speaking with you here in this order will be Commander Gordon Howey of the Central Precinct. Officer Anderson spent his entire NPD career at the Central Precinct. Officer Richard Conger. Officer Conger was the class president of MNPD trainee session 77, graduated on June 9th of 2015. Officer Anderson was a proud member of Session 77. And then finally, Lieutenant Matt Sears of the MNPD's Drill and Ceremony Team. Officer Anderson very much enjoyed his participation and membership on the MNPD's Drill and Ceremony Team. He was also a bagpiper. So in this order, Commander Howey, Officer Conger, and Lieutenant Sears, I would ask that you hear from all three of them first, and then after Lieutenant Sears speaks, the third of the uh, individuals will take whatever questions you might have. First, Commander Howey. Just like Mr. Aaron said, um, John had worked his entire career. at the Central Precinct on the CD Tail Midnight Shift. And he was a very dedicated officer, he worked extremely hard, volunteered all the time when other duties required. He received numerous accolades for his work. Um, working in the Central Precinct, it's the smallest precinct of all eight, but it's very busy. Downtown, uh, we have a lot of people from all over the world who come to be in Nashville. And John always treated uh, everyone, no matter where they were from, with the utmost respect and professionalism. He did an outstanding job, very much a valued member of this police department. Um, numerous occasions that I had to go to the road calls at night and I spend time with him. He was always somebody with a positive attitude and certainly a dedicated member of the department. Um, he unfortunately died doing what he loved to do. I've spoken to both of his parents and they echo that exact same sentiment that although his life was cut so very short, this is what he wanted to do, and he loved every single minute of it. He wanted to be a member of this police department, and uh, sad day, tragic event, but for the four years that he was at Central, he served this city, he served the downtown, he served the citizens of Nashville as well as all over the world because of the visitor that we have. And, um, you know, it's, I'm honored to have known him and uh, been able to be a part of the team that he was a part of. That's all I have right now. First and foremost, I just want to give my sincerest condolences to John's family, especially his parents, his son. Um, this is a sad day for this nation our city, and the Metropolitan Nashville Police Department. Um, 
John was a member of Session 77, as previously stated, um, from January of 2015 to June of 2015. I proudly got to serve with him as the class leader of that class. John was, as the commander stated, very dedicated to this job. Um, whatever he did, he tried to do it the best he could. He was very competitive, not to against me or you or anyone else, but himself. Um, while we were on breaks at the academy, he would be off to the side practicing whatever the task at hand was, whatever the next task at hand was. Um, he's perfectionist, whether it be his job, playing bagpipes, um, drill and ceremony, playing goalie as a, as a hockey goalie. I guess that was one of his passions. Um, he talked about his son constantly. Um, I know I spoke with a, one of his coworkers today. He told me that he was just talking about how his son was growing up so fast and he enjoyed spending time with him. And, um, and now, of course, today his life was tragically taken. Um, he's just, he's gonna be missed by the department. Um, all his, all the session 77 members. Um, so again, my condolences. Good afternoon. Um, I had the privilege to know John uh, for a couple of reasons. One, uh, primarily through the drill and ceremony team, drill and ceremony team, which is our uh, honor guard. Um, he served uh, very, very well there. Very committed member of that team. Um, as mentioned previously, he was one of our bagpipers. Um, he uh, put a lot, a lot of himself into that. Um, uh, even willing to use, if necessary, his own personal time to go to a bagpiping school and um, just a really uh, a good asset to our team. Uh, also privileged to know John by working with him uh, uh, at Bridgestone Arena, as also mentioned previously, a uh, big hockey fan, uh, as, as I am as well. So we always had something to talk about, uh, whether it was work or, or hockey or the drill team. Um, and, uh, you know, this is the type of thing that, um, as an honor guard, that we prepare for. Um, uh, but obviously, uh, it's a little more difficult for us today uh, since he was a part of the team. Um, so I appreciate everyone being here and those who've already reached out and uh, um, offered their condolences and, and their support. Um, it's certainly appreciated. Um, I'd also say that uh, he, well, he'll be missed. Uh, I honestly, it'll, at a loss in some ways, as what to say. It's still kind of shocking uh, for us. Uh, we'll take a few questions if anybody wants to ask anything of these three gentlemen. He was definitely involved with the local memorial service for Eric Mumal uh, that we had here. Um, I don't recall if he was able to make the trip to Ohio or not, um, but I can certainly find out. And we do have uh, lots of uh, footage and, and pictures of him working with the drill team, which we'll be providing to Mr. Aaron's office. A few of you talked about how he was a family man and his son. Um, would anybody want to talk more just about Unfortunately, our careers went different directions after the academy. I've been at East Precinct my four-year career, and 
Um, John was at Central, but I do talk to his fellow officers. And as I previously stated, I spoke with one this, as early as this, or as late as this morning. Um, and he had stated that he just constantly talked about his son, what a joy he was, um, and that he just loved spending time with him when he was off. Um, and as far as I know, he was a great father. Um, he was a great man, so I couldn't say that he wouldn't be a great father. How old was his son? His son was 18 months. Now, did he, I understand he was a big hockey fan. Um, did he also play locally? Was it for a, a Metro Police team? Or was it a Yes, yeah, so um, John played for, uh, there's a unofficial, I guess, uh, police team uh, usually made up of, of officers, sometimes even firefighters. It's hard to field a whole team sometimes, um, but and he was a part of that, uh, played goalie. I want to say he played with maybe Vanderbilt's uh, hockey team maybe at some point I'm not sure. or, uh, or maybe another local university. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, definitely, definitely a big hockey fan. And if I could add to about uh, the father aspect, unfortunately I never had opportunity to meet his son, but if uh, his, his phone or social media is an indication, he, he definitely – uh, loved him was a big part of his life because there's pictures of him and his son all over. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure uh, it'll be tough for him as well. This is the second um, in the last few years we had Officer Muma assisting a citizen die tragically. In this case, Officer Anderson assisting not only a citizen but a fellow officer in a tragic, tragic death. Talk about how you all are doing and how how does this a tragedy like this affect you all? Does it bring you, I hate to say it, closer together, but you know, how are you all doing as, as a department? Um, so, I mean, I don't know if I feel the liberty to speak for the entire department. Obviously, um, Central Precinct is, is really hurting, and I would say uh, uh, it's bringing them closer together right now uh, as they support each other. Um, I know on the honor guard, since he was part of our, our drone ceremony team, it's obviously going to bring us closer together, but um, right now we're focused on the task at hand, and, and that's honoring him since he, he was one of our brothers and he's, you know, he's no longer with us. So um, I'm sure there will be a time for, uh, for mourning, but I know at least with the drone ceremony team we're, we're mainly focused on on honoring his memory and his service to the community. So uh, I don't know if that answers your question, but it's it's never easy um, because there is a uh, kind of a family uh, camaraderie, I guess, that comes with being in law enforcement. And that's why already today I've had you know, numerous agencies, uh, particularly other honor guards, already reaching out and offering you know, whatever help they can lend. Uh, it's one of those things that uh, I think it's hard for anybody to understand until they've actually done the job. And so from that standpoint, uh, I guess there is a way that it brings us together. I, to I, I, I want to add to that for a moment. Um, the CDTEL at Central, 13 officers are signed currently to that detail. And then there are flex officers, so there's an additional four. But then we're, we're small. Um, and the officers know one another. They work a lot together, whether it's you know regular duty assignments or special events, different item things. And so this morning I had an opportunity to talk to uh, some of the officers that worked with him. And you know, uh, like Lieutenant Sears has said, you know, there's oftentimes things are done outside of work. And so it was a group that had uh, participated in a motorcycle ride this weekend. And so um, it does. You know, I think that there's a lot of camaraderie regardless all the time and events like this you know do draw people closer together and so that's a good thing but i do know that they're all very upset Um, you know it it is like everyone has said a a tragic event Uh, but i think and certainly at other precincts it's probably the same way but because it's a small group we work in a very close proximity to one another because central is such a smaller precinct so they have a lot of opportunity to with one another on a regular basis. One more question, please. My last question is that you know this is a we've talked about team 
14 crime. Now, this we, we understand that the car was not stolen. Still, a 17-year-old late at night speeding away from a police officer. How do you all grasp that the, the person allegedly responsible is so young? Well, you know, it's unfortunate, uh, but prior to my assignment at the Central Precinct, I was in charge of our Youth Services Division. And dealing with youth there, we were seeing youth more involved in crime and criminal activity and the ages much, much younger. Uh, so that is tragic, but um, for whatever reason currently, it's all too often too common. Um, and so I think that's a bigger question than, and something to be addressed at a later date, but uh, tragedy all the way around. Thank you all. Thank you all. We're so sorry.